September 23, 2014 meeting of the Oshkosh Common Council. I want to welcome all of you that are here in the Council Chamber to the Council Chamber. I also want to welcome those who might be watching us on Channel 10, those who might be watching us on their computers, those who might be listening to us on the computers, or those who might be listening to us on the radio. This is your city government, and we hope you'll participate in any way that you're comfortable with. So welcome to all. I'm going to ask the clerk to take the city roll, please. Pansky? Here. Fitzgerald? Here. Cummings? Here. Peck? Here. Herman? Here. Allison Osby? Here. Mayor Tower? Here. Present seven. Would all please rise? Uh, Councilwoman uh, <coughs> Pansky will read the invocation, and then we have some students who will lead us in the pledge. We come together this evening to discuss the issues that confront our city. May we always seek the wisdom to do things that reflect our concern for the people whom we represent. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ask our students to turn around and stay up here, please. We do appreciate you coming down and helping us out with the pledge today. These people like to know a little bit about you. Like, so why don't you let us know what your names are, where it is that you, you go to school, what grade you're in, and maybe some things that you might be involved in in the way of some activities in school. Um, I'm Ian Liefgren. I go to Lourdes Academy Middle School. Um, I'm in eighth grade, and I just play wrestling, baseball, and um, math bowl, Bob, which is Bell of the Books. I'm Alexandria Wilgernese, and I go to Lourdes Academy Middle School. I'm in eighth grade, and I do track and swing choir. Very good. Glad to have both of you here tonight. Also, Ian had a little, little football injury. He's been on a football team, and hasn't lasted long on a team with his, <coughs> with his injury. Well, we do appreciate you coming down today, and I have a certificate for each one of you. Ian, one for you. Alexandria, one for you. So if we could give him a hand. So appreciate you. let you two take off. Again, thanks for coming. <laughs> okay, it takes us to a public hearing. Uh, I'll read through the public hearing if anybody would like to comment on it. Uh, please feel free to come up to the microphone. The uh, microphone is, is, is turned on up there. Okay, the public hearing resolution 14-418. Approve final resolution for special assessments, cold mix, asphalt paving, various locations. I see no one coming forward. I'll bring it back to the council for a motion and a second. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded. Discussion? I just have a question. Sure. Um, for those that are watching on TV, those on um, radio, et cetera, uh, Mr. Popek, what streets are going to be part of this year's cold mix asphalt paving project? And I know those citizens probably have already got letters <coughs> from the clerk's office, but if we could just have the streets identified for those in attendance and those watching on t TV. Okay, we have six locations, uh, Hawk Street south of Buchanan, uh, Rugby between 8th and 11th Avenue, Adams Avenue, east of, of Bauman, uh, Rep Avenue, uh, between Pinocchio and Eagle, Nebraska between 22nd Avenue and 23rd Avenue, and Michigan Street south of 18th Avenue. And could you just briefly, for the, again, informational purposes, what what do we do when it's a cold mix asphalt? The, the cold mix asphalt program... Um, as we uh, we had sent a letter out to all the residents explaining that this is considered a a maintenance operation. It, according to the code, it lasts a minimum of five years. We found that um, it's been lasting 
uh, up to 15 or more years. Um, the intent is that we do an asphalt pavement to um, uh, give us some time to work on other streets with street reconstruction projects and then come back to these streets as a uh, more maintenance is, or reconstruction is needed. And, and most of these streets are, are mostly residential streets and streets that aren't high traffic streets also, correct? That's correct. There is, um, you know, there are businesses like there is a business on Rugby, uh, but for the most part there are residential streets. Okay. So then we grind down the street a little bit, um, smooth it out, and then put the cold mix asphalt in, right? We, we only have to do the um, some millings where we match into the existing concrete roads or, or existing asphalt roads in good condition or at the driveways, uh, we might have to do some grading, minor grading along the edges to make sure we have uh, drainage, positive drainage. And so we try to do a minimal amount of work and just put the overlay on top of what's there. And it's a very little interruption for the citizens that live on those streets as far as parking or things like that, correct? That's correct. All right, thank you very much. Any other? Questions, comments, discussion? Okay, seeing none, I'll ask for the roll call vote on resolution 14 418. Pansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Tech? Aye. Herman? Aye. Ellis Nosby? Aye. Mayor Tower? Aye. Carried seven. <clears throat> okay, time for citizen statements to the council. This is an opportunity where citizens can come up to the microphone up here and make a comment they would like about the city. Could be something positive that's going on, or it could be a concern that you have about the city. A few little rules go with that. If you do come up, please give us your name. Please give us your, your address. Uh, limit your comments to no more than five minutes. Speak directly to the council. Uh, do not talk about things that are elsewhere on the agenda, on tonight's agenda. And there's to be no electioneering. So if anybody would like to come up now. My name is Chuck Hodge, 202 Oxford Avenue. <coughs> I'm the secretary of the recently formed Greater Winnebago Advocacy Coalition on Mobility. And I wanted to let the public know that uh, we have meetings on the first Thursday of every month from 2 to 4 at the Senior Center. Now, what I'm going to say, uh, we, we haven't formed our bylaws or anything else like that, so what I'm about to say is from, you know, my personal account. Dear council members, Transportation development plans de developed by the East Central Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission are obviously required by the Department of Transportation and are used by NGOs and local governments to establish their need for federal assistance on operating and capital assistance. So however unfortunate it may be, I would like to point out it's pretty clear that Go Transit, in anticipation of cutbacks in federal transportation funding, went on a spending spree on themselves with the available DOT capital assistance grants available in 2013. The results, a dysfunctional ADA non-compliant fixed route system where only $10,000 was earmarked for ADA compliance projects which supposedly involved a few paving and curbing, uh, curbing improvements. <clears throat> Contrary to what the Transportation Department is saying, all these problems are the direct result of Go Transit spending almost the, all the federal grant money they received in 2013 on expensive items for themselves. They totally disregarded the capital, uh, capital improvements which were suggested in the 2011 Oshkosh Transportation Development Plan, which would have made the present fixed route system ADA compliant. Instead, they spent the grant money on a $110,000 passenger counting system that cannot tell the difference between the elderly and the disabled from regular riders. This is especially problematic because passenger numbers and boarding and lighting locations are used by Go Transit to justify changes in the fi fixed route system. System, and the elderly and the disabled will not be represented in the passenger counts. Another concerning matter is Go Transit has a history of reporting deceptive and misleading numbers regarding passenger counts if it helps them advance their agendas. One example is the May 2012 Transit Advisory Board's agenda items on fewer stops and parking lots. It, they said currently 93% of the passengers at 88 of the most highly used stops in the system do not access the system in parking lots. This incre increases to 96% of the passengers. The truth is almost all the destinations which required the, the buses to enter parking lots 
were actually some of the most highly used stops in the system. Out of Ghost Transit's 89 bus stops, a total of 11 required entering parking lots. Out of those 11 bus stops, three were found to be among the 10 busiest stops in the system, and five of those stops were among the top 20. This new piece of technology being used by GoTransit apparently does not offer any auditing capabilities where GoTransit passenger counts can be checked for tampering and accuracy. All the Transportation Department needs to do is interrupt the laser on the counter as many times as they feel is sufficient or they could perform a time clock revision with the system and revise the passenger counts any way they want to. Eastern, East, East Central Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission and the public should be highly skeptical and concerned about this new passenger counting system. There are just too many ways to beat it. They also spent $113,000 in surveillance upgrades on buses and to transit facilities. Upgrades indicate that the surveillance systems on GO Transit buses, buses and the transit facilities were still in work, good working order. Yet during this time of fiscal cutbacks and the new budget considerations, GO Transit spent $113,000 on upgrading a surveillance system that didn't need upgrading. They could have spent the taxpayers' money on something that Go Transit really needed, like capital improvements to make the fixed route system ADA compliant. They spent $60,000 on an accessible van they said was replacing a supervisor staff vehicle. Go Transit already has a couple of late model compact supervisor staff vehicles. The van they wanted to replace was a van that is used by Go Transit drivers. Go Transit claims this vehicle has been used to help up catch, catch up routes when they have fallen behind schedule and is therefore used for passenger transport from time to time. An accessible vehicle ensures that we are providing equitable, equitable service to our customers. The Transportation Department knows the only equitable service this new accessible ban is going to provide Go Transit bus is uh, Go Transit bus drivers at shift changes. The Oscos Transportation used some very questionable and suspicious reasons for wanting to purchase this accessible van. They did, however, fail to mention in the public record that the van's primary purpose it includes making stops at Starbucks and shuttling Go Transit bus drivers around town. Go Transit buses go everywhere and anywhere that Go Transit bus drivers would need to go. Go Transit bus drivers should be riding Go Transit buses to their shift changes because it would have meant $60,000 more could have been spent on capital improvements that would make the fixed route system ADA compliant. My biggest concern, however, is with the present fixed route system is that Go Transit did not follow the Transportation Development Plan's recommendation to implement a single hub system for the city of Oshkosh and their continued resistance to change it back to a single hub system. Instead, they designed a system with six, hub, with six hubs, which has, in effect, doubled the chance of slip, trip, and fall injuries to the elderly and the disabled and has caused many of them to start using more specialized transportation alternatives which is a more limiting and a more costly option, re resulting in less cost-effective use of the taxpayers' dollars. That was Katie Monk, Chief Executive Officer at Lakeland Care District, in a, mark in a letter to Mark Roloff, uh, dated September 23, 2013. Clearly, these six hubs transfer points are not needed in a city the size of Oshkosh, and it is, is extremely clear that these hubs and transfer points continue to violate the accessibility and transportation rights of the elderly and disabled, which are guaranteed by the ADA. I'm going to ask you to finish up here. Okay. I'll give you a little extra time already. It is hoped that the Common Council will see that they need to take action on this very important transportation issue and instruct city management and the transportation department to adopt and implement one of the two alternative systems given in the 2000 transportation development plan. This has gone on much too long and is unacceptable not only to me but every other physically challenged or elderly person in Oshkosh who rides or wants to ride the buses at Go Transit. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else like to come forward? Excuse, could the could the gentleman please provide a copy of that to the clerk? Yep, thank okay, you. Thank you. Like I said, I'm not too good at public speaking. Okay. Start you did a thank good you. job. Anybody else like to come forward at this point? Seeing no one come forward, I will go to the consent agenda items. The consent agenda items are a group of <coughs> items that the uh, administration feels are non-controversial in nature and as such are presented 
uh, in a way that they'll be voted on with, with one vote, unless either a council member or a citizen wants to have a particular item removed from the consent agenda. If that happens, then we'll take that item off the consent agenda for separate consideration. What I'm going to do is this, is I'm going to read through these items, and as I read through these items, if there's one the public would like to speak to, as I read that item, I'd ask that you come forward to the microphone. Uh, once the public has had a chance to speak on all these items, I will bring them back to the council for some discussion and, and ultimately a vote. So I'm going to start reading through them, and again, if there's an item you'd like to speak to, please come forward as I read that particular item. Approval of bills presented by the finance director. Receipt and filing of museum board minutes from August 7, 2014. Approval of cash report for August 2014. Receipt of claim filed with the city's insurance company. Cody Abler for alleged damage to his vehicle from a sanitation truck. Resolution 14-419, approved granting utility easement to Wisconsin Public Service Corporation, 663 West 3rd Avenue. Resolution 14-420, Approve accepting easements for construction of a bus shelter, 1900 Jackson Street. My name is Rob. My name is Rob Patterson. I live at High 30 North Main, uh, apartment 103. This is my mailing address. And I presently live in apartment 303 while 103 is being fixed up. Um, I'm here to speak about the bus route. Um, the recommendations were from the plan commission, I believe. And uh, I got, I had some information about that last week that the, uh, the city has started working on the uh, bus, the bus stall, bus, and uh, <coughs> on Jackson Street. But then I also realized that today I heard on the radio that you were voting on it tonight. So I thought it was, uh, a, it's already a foregone conclusion, I gather. But uh, my argument is that um, as, as of last winter, the city and uh, Pick and Save had differences of opinion about who was to keep that walk clear of, of uh, snow and ice last winter. And um, I think on one occasion it was real icy. I got off the bus on Jackson Street and I couldn't even well, I was able to stand, but I have a hard time with, with balance and coordination. And uh, I just kept slipping and falling. And I thought to myself, well, this stuff isn't going to work. And I didn't have enough money for the cab that night. So uh, I just, I got stood up and uh, the bus driver had moved on. And uh, he said I could just get back on the bus, you know. And I would just go back home. And that all worked out just fine. But I asked you to, to put yourself in my place and in my shoes and you're disabled. And, um, and uh, speaking for the disabled and for the elderly, this uh, bus stop just won't work. Um, I also serve on the Human Services Board as a citizen member, and why I'm mentioning that is because of, the, I believe, the cost of a bus is around, give or take, $500,000, and um, not, not including fringe and benefits. Now, why would I say this? Because as long as I've been coming to the council meetings, I've been hearing about the, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, uh, you're always making a big, a big argument for, um, 
innovation and uh, bring, bringing more uh, uh, income into the city. And uh, I find this I find it peculiar because you won't you won't invest in more buses. And um, I just wanted to, to make you aware of, of the things that I'm doing and uh, things that were going on. And I, and I see that my time is just about up. So in conclusion, I would say think carefully before you vote tonight on uh, what you're going to do with uh, approving this resolution. And um, just think about, think about it. OK, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank just you. one, Can one quick you? clarification there. We're, we're talking mm -hmm. about accepting uh, the easement at this point, which is related to location, but we're really not specifically mm -hmm. talking about location, but it's obviously related. Mr. Fitzgerald. Oh, that was just the, the clarification I wanted to make, and I just wanted to ensure that, that Mr. Patterson, your, your concern is, is strictly about the location of where the shelter is going to be built, correct? That, OK, OK, great. Anybody else? <clears throat> okay, resolution 14-421. Um, approved conditional use permit, plan development, and architectural design for construction of public restrooms, shelter, and associated amenities for Boat Works Riverwalk Park development. Uh, resolution 14-422, award bid for metal and concrete surface coating for water filtration plant to Omni Glass and Paint Inc. Resolution 14-423, award bid for tunnel deck coating for wastewater treatment plant to Central Restoration, LLC. Resolution 14-424, approved purchase of single turner valve maintenance trailer for water distribution department for EH Walks. <coughs> Resolution 14-425, award bid for towing services, contract for police department to Expert Automotive Service, LLC. Resolution 14-426, approve initial resolution declaring intent to reassess tax parcel number 15-1898-1000, reconstruction of Jackson Street, Murdoch Avenue intersection. Resolution 14-427, approval of special event, and now these are all going to be special events, so I won't say special event each time. <clears throat> Menominee South Neighborhood Association and Mid-Morning Kiwanis to utilize Menominee Park tennis courts for their Oshkosh Tennis Open at Menominee Park, October 4, 2014. Resolution 14-428, UWO Police Department and Special Olympics to utilize city streets for their run with the cops, 5K, October 9, 2014. <clears throat> Resolution 14-429, Oshkosh North Student Council to utilize city streets for their Oshkosh North High School Homecoming Parade, October 10, 2014. Resolution 14-430, Oshkosh Aces MC Inc. to utilize city streets for their fourth annual chili run for Adopt a Family, October 11, 2014. Resolution 14-431, Oshkosh West Student Government to utilize city streets for their Oshkosh West Homecoming Parade, October 17, 2014. Resolution 14-432, UW Oshkosh to utilize city streets for the UWO Tour to Titan, October 18, 2014. Resolution 14-433, UW Oshkosh to utilize UWO Sports Complex for the UWO Tenth City, October 18, 2014. Resolution 14-434, Oshkosh Chamber of Commerce and Network Health to utilize city streets for their Oshkosh Chamber of Commerce Holiday Parade, November 13, 2014. Resolution 14-435, Saturday's Farmer's Market to utilize city streets for their Farmer's Market June 6, 2015 through October 31, 2015. Resolution 14-436, Vietnam Veterans of America to utilize city streets for their Oshkosh 4th of July Parade July 4, 2014. <coughs> Resolution 14-437, Approval of block party request Cliffview Drive between Murdoch Avenue and Grabner Street, September 27, 2014. Resolution 14-438, approve appointment to Transit Advisory Board. 
Resolution 14-439, approve combination Class B licenses, special Class B licenses, and <coughs> operator licenses. Last chance to come forward on any of these. Seeing no one coming forward, I'm going to bring it back to the council for any discussion. First, any questions you may have or if there are items that you want removed from the consent agenda for separate consideration, if you'd let me know, I would do so. Mr. Cummings. Uh, thank you, Mary. Uh, Resolution 14-421 is tied also to uh, new resolutions 14-442 and 14-443, which all have to do with the Boltworks property. Uh, I'd like Mr. Davis to come up here and just explain because it's kind of one package, you, even though we will be voting differently at different times. Overview of the project. Overview of the whole project, yes. Even though there are three separate issues, it, it's all tied together. You're on. Yes, the city has a plan for the whole Boatworks Riverwalk corridor redevelopment. That included a lot of elements. Uh, the most important one was a river walk, but we also identified other features uh, in the Boatworks area for uh, kind of a mini park that would include a shelter and bathroom, a parking lot, and public access and. Fortunately, the city has put in enough grant applications and explained the whole project to DNR over the years that uh, when the DNR had some additional funding that they could uh, put towards projects, they saw not only our river walk but our plans for the rest of that park. Uh, and they said if we could uh, come up with uh, specific projects that they could fund, uh, we could apply for additional grant funding. Uh, we did that earlier this year, and uh, we were recently awarded uh, funding that would pay uh, for the bathroom shelter, uh, the parking lot, stormwater management, the connection to the neighborhood to the south, uh, and a canoe kayak launch. And the shelter is one of those pieces <coughs> that is kind of an add-on to the whole project. We were doing the river walk, but when uh, DNR had the additional funding, the additional grants, we were able to do more projects, including the bathroom shelter. Uh, the other piece that uh, so we're accepting all those grant funds. Uh, the other piece that we're also doing tonight is asking uh, to uh, retain ACOM to uh, work on the additional engineering required for the additional projects uh, at the Bulwark's property. So that kind of encapsulates everything. Okay. Thank you. And I, I might add, I had the chance to go past there about two weeks ago from the water, <coughs> and what has been done so far really looks incredible. It's just it's excellent, just fantastic. So. Excellent. Good work. Thank you. Yes. Mr. Mayor, I, I have a question, I, and I guess I don't know if it should be for staff or, or for the citizens here, but uh, related to uh, resolutions 14-435 uh, and 14-436, these are for the, uh, the farmer's market and the uh, 4th of July parade. And uh, I, I know there had been, you, you, you can tackle that, I, I know there had been some, some concern uh, initially just about the, the 4th of July event, uh, or the 4th of July farmer's market. Uh, falling at the same time as the parade. Uh, I, I see there's representatives here from both organizations, and I, I didn't know if they were going to speak when the resolutions came up, but I, I guess... I think they're just... Yeah, I, I guess I just want to ensure that there's some mutual agreement from, from both parties on what's taking place. I think this is an, an outstanding example of two groups cooperating very well together. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that there was a concern about what was ultimately going to happen. Our special events committee met with uh, the... Uh, invited the groups to come in and threw out some ideas and they went back and came back with a resolution to this. Uh, they're adjusting the route for the parade on the 4th of July. Uh, a few years back in 2010 when construction was going on Main Street, the parade had to move their route uh, because they didn't want to fall into a hole while they were going through a parade. This time uh, they're working together so that both the farmer's market and the parade can coexist uh, and we're very pleased and proud that they were able to, to work it out with when with minimal uh, concern and just appreciate everybody's cooperation on it. Okay. And, and I have a com comment on it. Yep. Go ahead. Mr. Herman. I totally agree with everything you said, except the route to me doesn't make any sense going down Division Street. That's going to put too much traffic into those residential neighborhoods along with the farmer's market traffic. We'll get complaints from the business district, which we did, which we still do now with the farmer's market, that people would be parking in those lots for both events and customers can't get to their businesses. We'll get complaints on that. 
I think for the most part the committee discussed those issues because it is the 4th of July uh, the number of businesses open aren't going to be as significant I know some businesses have already expressed a concern and Matt Harris uh, is working on logistics so that ingress and egress in and out of the parking lots will be able to to be maintained I'm more I'm as much concerned about that as I am for Meadow Village uh, Association um, division streets a very narrow street mm -hmm. And there is no parking there'll be all residential parking I would have thought personally when they hit Washington they would have stayed on Washington and took it down to Hazel would have been much more wider street it would have been much more room for citizens to watch the parade I know Irving's a big street where a lot a lot of citizens do come and watch the parade but I think putting it on division I'll just use my law enforcement yeah. background that's a nightmare I but, guess I, but I, they agree and that's fine it's their parade it's their route um, they worked it out that that's the biggest thing because I, I know I don't think council wanted to be the deciding factor of the route but I, I, I just think that they should have looked at a more major street than division to put it on when they hit Washington that's just personal opinion but I think there's good logistical issues that can be discussed and if any of the folks want to comment on those perhaps they can uh, if uh, if something came up where people thought we might want to tweak the routes I think we would be open to that um, but I think these folks wanted to know they had a route in place the parades going the farmers markets going and so they can proceed with their plans um, <clears throat> those comments are well taken and I guess the groups can take the, take it into consideration if they if they want to consider any type of route change I, I'm sure we would entertain those requests as well and um, there were some creative options that uh, that, that weren't right. didn't seem you like know, they were going to work you know, out. Just going back to you know, if you if you drive down Central <clears throat> and Parkway and all those Middle Village streets, they're very small, very narrow, and you're asking cars that can park on both sides of the street, and we're still going to be able to get fire trucks through there and ambulances. Did we check on that? Police Did and that fire look at police and fire um, because part that's going to be very narrow. Those streets are only what, uh, Mr. Patek, do you know what those? Oh, it's only 32, 30, 30, 30. They're 30 foot wide, but there's parking restricted on one side. On all that, in that whole oh, subdivision? Right. In that whole? Right. Okay. All right, that's good. I just know that it's a very old part of our neighborhoods, and the parking from Jackson to <clears throat> Division is very narrow and small streets. I just think that there would be better opportunity, because it's almost two different entities. Either you come to the farmers, and you may cross over. But um, I think a lot of people come with kids and family. They're going to be walking blocks to get to Division Street to watch parade because of the parking. And they'll be parking on the other side of Jackson. I hope that we have CSOs and police officers monitoring the intersections because you're going to have a lot of traffic up and down Jackson and a lot of citizens walking across the intersections, Church, Jackson, Jackson, and other intersections where there will be 35 mile an hour traffic going down the roads. Just a safety concern. Okay, just a quick comment I, here because I go ahead. I, I saw a gentleman in a blue uniform back there getting up a moment ago. I'd like to have him come up to the front. Looked like he wanted to speak. <laughs> yeah, I just want to say I think your your concerns are well placed, although I, I trust in the logistics that Sergeant Harris is going to work out uh, I haven't seen fully the plan yet but uh, in the interest of kind of keeping it close to the traditional route um, we felt that it would work access to the businesses 4th of July some of those will be closed uh, we do have a plan you know uh, on to um, El Goma uh, I'm sorry from Brown on to division for you know some of the ingress egress to occur so uh, I'm confident that we will um, have a good plan in place. Um, we will have staff there to monitor all the concerns that you have. We've thought of those. So I'm, I'm pretty com comfortable it'll work. Thank you. Yeah, hey, just a couple of comments. I, I do want to express appreciation part of the council to both groups. There's some compromising going on here. Two, two great organizations have put on great events. Everything happens to happen on the 4th of July. It'll be, it'll be busy and everybody's going to have to walk a little, but that'll be true at the fireworks at the same time. But the main thing is, is that people were able to work together 
and get this settled out in a way. Uh, if we can tweak it some that makes it better for everybody, then so much. I'm also pleased that this got settled now and we aren't here next March discussing what's going to happen unless we tweak it a little between now and then. So, again, th thanks to both groups. Okay, other comments on, uh, yeah, Mr. Yeah, Cummings. Uh, one, more, <coughs> one more question. This is Resolution 14-426, which is the approved initial resolution declaring intent to reassess tax parcel 15 and so forth due to the reconstruction of Jackson Street and Murdoch Avenue. Um, can you explain kind of in layman's terms what that means and what is CEDLLC? CEDLLC is the property owner for it's the Taco Bell parcel. Okay. Back in 2010, there was road reconstruction. That intersection was changed. There were assessments. They CED challenged their assessments, and as we proceeded through court. Um, Ultimately, the assessments were um, invalidated by the court based on a technical ground. In that situation, the statutes allow us, allow a municipality to go back and have a do-over. You can start the process over and reassess. So that's what we're proposing. It's for the same amount that was um, assessed in the original assessment. The, it doesn't affect any of the other properties. They've either paid already or are on their payment plan and paying them. It's just that one parcel. Thank you. Sure. Any other comments or anybody want to pull anything for separate consideration? I, just a, is, yeah, Mr. Herman. Yeah, it's resolution 14-420 addressing Mr. Patterson's concerns. Mr. Collins isn't here, is he? No, he's not. Was wasn't there some discussion that they with the, where this location of the uh, bus shelter wasn't there going to be a side a separate sidewalk put in laterally or something? I believe it sounds like Ms. Lawrence may know the answer. So <laughs> there's some discussion with um, the pick and save owners about putting in a sidewalk kind of diagonally right. to that um, that. Discussions ongoing. It looks like it might happen, but that hasn't been absolutely finalized yet. Okay. okay. So, so they are aware that there could be some issues, and they're working with transit and everything to address some of those concerns. They've been very cooperative. Okay. All right. Yeah. Just to, you know, I don't want him to think we weren't thinking about his concerns because I know it kind of goes uphill a little bit there. So in the winter, it could be a problem. But it's farther down too. It's not right at the entrance to the parking lot. Yeah, they, they would probably be more beneficial to folks who are boarding the bus rather than uh, getting dropped off because once they get dropped off, they would probably just use the regular sidewalk. But if somebody was waiting for the bus, that diagonal sidewalk that you're referring to would mm -hmm. make it easier to, and quicker to get to the bus shelter, and then they'd be under the shelter until the bus arrived. Okay, very good. Thank you. Mr. Covey. And, and I believe uh, Pick and Save has agreed to keep that area clean in the winter. Yeah, that, that'll be their responsibility, and that's pretty much written into uh, most of the easement agreements that they're responsible for. It, it just makes it more uh, likely that they'll get it done because they're out there. They're required to do the sidewalks in the first place, so the things leading up to the bus shelters, uh, the property owner typically does those. Okay. So no more hands. Or somebody tapping me on the shoulder. <clears throat> uh, I will ask for a motion and a second on the consent agenda as presented. So, so moved. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any further discussion at this point? Seeing none, I'll step to the clerk, take the roll call vote on the consent agenda as presented to the council. Pansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Peck? Aye. Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Mayor Tower? Aye. Carried seven. Okay, there were no items removed from the consent agenda, so that takes us down to a new ordinance. This will be the first of two readings. I'll have one reading tonight and one reading at the meeting in, in two weeks. Uh, tonight, uh, anybody would like to comment on this particular ordinance, feel free to come up and speak at the microphone. Um, otherwise, uh, it will be brought up at the next meeting, and that's when it will actually be voted on. Ordinance 14-440, approval of parking regulation changes on Sawyer Street. See no one come forward, then we'll, we will go on to the new resolutions. New resolutions, go through these one at a time uh, for consideration. Resolution 14-441, 
amend 2014 Capital Improvement Program to move funds from National Guard Armory Area Stormwater Detention Basin Project to Marion Road Storm Sewer Outfall Project. If anybody would like to speak to that who's here in the Council Chamber, please come forward. See no one come forward. Come back to Council for a motion and a second. So moved. Second. second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion at this point? Seeing none, I'll ask the Deputy Clerk to take the roll call vote on Resolution 14-441. Pansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? <laughs> Aye. Cummings? Aye. Peck? Aye. Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Mayor Tower? Aye. Carried seven. Resolution 14-442, approve accepting grant funds from Department of Natural Resources, Boat Works, Pedestrian Bridge, River Walk Project. Would I like to come forward to speak to that? This is project that was talked about before down on the Boat Works property on the river. Okay, bring it back to Council for a motion and a second. So moved. Second. second. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion at this point on the grant funds? Say none. I, oh, I'm sorry. I, I do want to make make one uh, one comment, and this is you know, we're talking grant dollars from the DNR. Yeah, that is nine hundred and forty-four thousand two hundred eighty-one dollars and thirty-five cents we're getting from the DNR. Mr. Davis is shaking his head. Yes. So, Congratulations. That's just that making dollars. So yeah, that's correct. making a lot of this project uh, d doable. So thank yes, you. Yes. Keep it up. <laughs> okay. Where am I? Any other discussion? Seeing none, I'll ask the clerk to take the roll call vote on resolution 14 442. Pansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Peck? Aye. Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Mayor Tower? Aye. Carried seven. Resolution 14 443 approve engineering service agreement with AECOM for Boat Works restroom improvements. Anybody I'd like to speak to that? Seeing no one come forward to speak to that, I'll bring it back to the council for a motion and a second. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Questions? Comments? Seeing none, I'll ask the clerk to take the roll call vote on resolution 14 443. Pansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Peck? Aye. Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Mayor Tower? Aye. Carried seven. Okay, that takes us to pending resolutions. <coughs> Resolution 14-444, approve neighborhood association recognition policy. If anybody like to speak to that? Great, coming up. Uh, this is something we considered before, and some people have made some comments about it before, and there have been a number of changes made in response to those comments. So. I'm Ellen Herlash, 1029 Hazel Street. Before you vote on this proposed neighborhood association policy, I would like to suggest three amendments. The name chosen, number one, the name chosen for this association should reflect the true location of that neighborhood. For example, the waters of Millers Bay extend from Oaks Trail on the north and to the end of Irving Avenue on the south. Wouldn't you think that the people living in those 50 houses would be considered a neighborhood? We all enjoy the views of Miller's Bay and we all share the advantages as well as the disadvantages of living across the street from Menominee Park. We also have higher assessments and pay higher taxes as a result. But the fact is, the Millers Bay Association was formed without inviting those of us who live south of New York Avenue, cutting off our neighborhood in half. But they did include their friends living near Webster Stanley School, who are far from the lake and park and have a different set of problems. They even shut out the George Washington statue from their association. Which brings me to the second amendment I propose. A neighborhood association should deal only with issues within, within the borders of their own neighborhood. The Washington statue is not in their neighborhood by their own definition. Not to worry, they spent money, many dollars, to have three sets of landscape designs drawn up and invited us, the outsiders, 
to choose one along with them. Many people didn't like any of the plans. Too much concrete, too little green space, an attractive nuisance which could bring problems. My third amendment would require that all projects proposed by a neighborhood association must be funded by that association. No tax money, no matching funds. They are required to have a fundraiser in every year anyway, so let them spend what they earn on their projects. As you very well know, our city, state, and country are deeply in debt, and we must distinguish between wants and needs. <clears throat> President Washington risked his life, his health, and his property so that we would not be ruled or taxed by a non-elected king reaching across the ocean. I want some assurance that other Oshkosh neighborhoods will not be pushed around by a non-elected neighborhood association in another part of the city. I request that this resolution be tabled until all of this can be sorted out. The best way to honor President Washington is to follow his precepts, which have stood the test of time. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like to come forward? My, my name's Gary Gray, 815 West uh, Linwood. Um, about a month ago, I came before the council and talked about the uh, proposed uh, neighborhood recognition policy uh, <clears throat> back then. And uh, I was asked to submit my suggestions to to the city, and I did. And the city did, for some reason, uh, uh, took took my most of my suggestions. There are some uh, suggestions I made that are not in the current policy, uh, but uh, there, there's also some things in the current policy that I don't think are good. Uh, uh, but. Um, the thing is, is I'm I'm not spitting the the new uh, the new policy. The city staff is uh, spitting it. Uh, I think it's just a, a difference of understanding of what a community association is and the purpose of the community organization. But uh, go, go, going on from, from that, um, I I would suggest there uh, could be a small. Uh, uh, correction on the currently proposed uh, uh, policy, and what I'm talking about is uh, the second from the last sentence in the removal of recognition section. And before I get to specifics, uh, I believe that generally the Common Council uh, generally uh, flies 30,000 feet off the ground in oversight for city staff uh, uh, activities and proposals. From time to time, a council member flies down to tree top, top level to look at more detailed uh, activities. And then af after looking at the uh, activities and you know maybe even making some modifications, trying to make some modifications, they fly back up to 30,000 feet. Um, the uh, sentence I, I'm talking about is this sentence that says, if the city removes recognition, the neighborhood association, the city council, will be informed in writing, which is fine. However, um, I think that th this is basically uh, uh, looking, looking at uh, uh, staff activities at a tree level uh, uh, I, at three level, not at 30,000 feet. And I think uh, the rest of the policy is basically having the council look at this for 30,000 uh, feet level. Uh, the, the interesting thing about this sentence is that the staff will notify the city council, the common council, in writing of a decision that the common council made. And I'm not sure why. Uh, the city council, uh, I'm sorry, the common council should be notified 
of something that they are very uh, well of. And I would su suggest that this sentence may be modified a little bit uh, by just uh, two, two things. Well, what one is the deletion. The deletion is just remove and city council and then add to the, to the end of the sentence within five, uh, three business days so that the revised sentence would say if the, the city removes recognition, the neighborhood association will be informed in writing within three business days. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like to come forward at this point? Okay, if not, I will bring it back uh, to the council and ask for a motion and a second on resolution 14 444. So moved. <clears throat> second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? Mr. Mr. Mayor, I just want to, uh, Mr. Gray, as you said, and you said you don't, you don't know why they took your suggestions. It's because they were good suggestions that you brought forward last month. So thank you for those. Um, th th one of the suggestions that Mr. Gray made that that wasn't included in the um, in, in this revision, and it was a suggestion that I thought was important as well, is that the, the neighborhood associations would be required to report their financial <coughs> information on a annual basis and. Uh, um, the reasons that, that city staff decided not to include this within the revision were that they were there were some concerns apparently from from the neighborhood associations about uh, having that financial information uh, be made public. Uh, I, I, I guess personally, I don't necessarily agree with that. It, it's not a deal breaker for me to not pass this resolution uh, tonight. I, I think it's important that we get this on the table, but I do want the public to know that that is not included in this, and and you know at some point, and this is going to be open to revision. Uh, at any point down the road, um, you know, should should citizens determine that that's important for, uh, and, and I see uh, our community development director is coming forward. I think to maybe give more of an explanation than than I'm giving, but but I, you know, it, it, I, I ultimately I want the citizens to be aware of the fact that that's not going to be a requirement as far as this policy is stated at this point. Although to, to clarify, when there's any city funds, that will always have to be accounted for. It's the private funds that they would not have mm -hmm. to account for. Right. And, so and that city would be, funds would always be accounted for. Okay. And that would be for a specific project that they would do that they Correct. would be using those city funds for. Correct. Yeah. So we'll always re require an accounting for that. It's the other activities that they have. Uh, that they would prefer to keep in within their own organization, and since there's no city funds, I didn't see a compelling public interest mm -hmm. to include that. Okay, thanks for that clarification. Appreciate it. Uh, hey there, Mr. Davis. I have a question. Sure. It was brought up about um, neighborhood associations can only make decisions that are in the boundaries of their neighborhood association, right? They can't technically go outside of their boundary. I mean, they can make suggestions, maybe, but well, realistically, they, the reason there's an association is so that they focus on issues in their identified neighbor, neighborhoods, right? That's typically the case, although when you do a, a plan, uh, that's when we nail down what they actually want to, to accomplish. And sometimes it might not be in their neighborhood. I'm, Emmeline Cook is an example where there's two neighborhood associations that see an interest, and it's really just in one of the neighborhood associations. But Emmeline Cook serves multiple neighborhoods. So I, I can't really say that that's... That's something that we want to hold a, a hard, fast rule on because neighborhood associations can have an interest outside their neighborhood that affects their neighborhood directly, like the school or potential park service uh, or any other kind of event that might be occurring in their neighborhood. So uh, I'd be reluctant to prohibit a neighborhood association from doing anything that's within their geographic boundary. There are some examples in the last year that uh, I think there's a, a compelling interest for the neighborhood to get involved with a project outside their neighborhood. And, and one and one comment with Emmeline Cook, the, the the two associations have also worked with the school district. Yes. So this has been a very collaborative effort. Right. And I think, as far as the, the recogn recognition policy that has been worked on extensively by city staff and the neighborhood associations, many of which it formed three four years ago. So this is something that just didn't happen overnight. I think if the association members feel comfortable with this draft. That's my understanding. And yeah. just to clarify one other point, uh, whenever the, the city puts any money in towards a project, that is always on public property. It's always a public improvement. If it's right. private property, a private improvement, that's always the neighborhood association's responsibility. As was done with the triangle on right. Bone Street. Correct. So that was city property. But 
Neighbor Works funded that. Yes. When, and we will take donations for city projects on city property, of course, which is what neighborhood associations right. have also done. Mr. Herman. Just one more question, Mr. Davis. You mentioned uh, the funding state. Could you just, for those in attendance and listening, how does the city fund the neighborhood associations, or how do we work with, I shouldn't say fund them, how do we work with them to, to get some of their projects that they're interested in throughout the city and their neighborhood? It's kind of a, a birthing process and, and, and growing and developing. Uh, uh, we help them if they want to organize, if there's a, just a critical mass of, uh, of residents that want to find out if there's interest in the neighborhood, we'll actually help them do a survey uh, send out a mailing, an information piece. If We'll also attend meetings if they want to talk about uh, creating a neighborhood association, the pluses and minuses. If they choose to create a neighborhood association, then we'll assign staff to help them with projects. Uh, typically, there will be a plan for the neighborhood, and we'll help them with uh, putting a plan together, operational plan and a capital improvement plan, if you want to uh, put it that way. Uh, and then we'll help them actually implement some of those things uh, because if there's city projects on city land, it's important that the city has an important uh, role to play on that. So we'll help them through that entire process up to and including the, the council approval and any kind of bidding requirements to make sure we meet all the city's requirements when it comes to these projects. Uh, and then we'll uh, help them with uh, their own uh, projects as time goes by. To, and we actually work with NeighborWorks to, so all the neighborhood associations kind of know what each other is doing so they can learn from each other as well so uh, we run the whole gamut of helping create grow and maintain right. but the funding piece of that where does it come into your budget I mean, uh, we, and we approve under, it through under planning services at this point right. it's in the planning department so there's two planners that they're just about their uh, a bulk of their time is spent on neighborhood associations and neighborhood association projects okay very good thank you other comments Again, I want to thank all those who are involved. Uh, the policy has been developed through the work of a lot of people, primarily out of the neighborhoods and with staff, so we're appreciative of that. may not be perfect, may be subject to further revision at any point in time, but it's important to have a policy out there and some guidelines so that we have some structure attached mm -hmm. to this and some understanding. So thank you and your department and You're all welcome. the people involved. I appreciate all the input from the neighborhoods and help them staff. Thank you. Okay, with that, I'll ask... Uh, Deputy Clerk, take the roll call vote on Resolution 14-444. Pansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Heck? Aye. Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Mayor Tower? Aye. Carried seven. Takes us to council discussion, direction of city manager, and future agenda items. Uh, go EDC update. I don't really have anything formal because the last time I reported, it's pretty much the same thing. We're in the process of recruiting for... Uh, go EDC's first uh, CEO uh, deadlines in the next couple weeks uh, so we'll be reviewing uh, applications after that uh, and the uh, request for proposal for marketing services and website development is also out there and uh, we'll be uh, reviewing that as well very soon and the uh, resource development committee ie fundraising is uh, actively getting ready so if you have a business in town uh, chances are we're going to be knocking on your door collectively with GoEDC. So uh, that's really the update I have at this time. If you have any questions, happy to answer them. I cannot. Future agenda items, budget workshops. We gotta, we're got we going to be back here tomorrow night, folks, yep. five, 5 to 7 tomorrow night. Yeah, so we're I think Ms. Larson provided you with a draft agenda. Hopefully it's there. Okay, good, because um, I just have a pre-draft. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> the uh, one thing that we've done in the past is whenever Shank is ready to do the annual audit report, we will do it. They will be here tomorrow night. We had to truncate the agenda a little bit because we, we do want to give them an opportunity. But this is an, a general overview. Uh, the CIP, we are not intending to go through the CIP uh, document that the plan commission received. That was given to them for purposes of determining its uh, consistency with the comprehensive plan. We're going to be tweaking that a little more to make it more of a financial document, and we'll explain that a little more tomorrow night. We are going to go through some basic overview as it's shown on the agenda. Probably the biggest thing are, that we want to talk about are, um, uh, towards the bottom, CIP policy ideas, uh, as well as prioritization. That was a big issue for Council. What do we go through? to when we analyze projects and how do we determine 
how they get in the CIP in the first place. We're going to have some information on that and happy to provide that for you at that time. And then the, the uh, other <coughs> issue there are scheduling uh, future workshops. Um, November 5th was identified as a uh, the third night and before, November before we do that we got the 29th and 30th here on the budget stuff too. Right. Those were pretty much set. Those right. are departments. Right. Right. Those are the traditional ones where the departments make the presentations. We're going to have the departments split into two. So 29th you'll have one group, the 30th you'll have another group. Uh, and then um, the 5th is typically the third one where we do get into the CIP and hopefully with the meeting tomorrow night we'll lay the groundwork. We're going to get into a little bit of public works and streets because that is such a huge part of the CIP. Um, but I think we're going to lay the groundwork tomorrow night so that as you're looking at the CIP um, you'll be able to see uh, the thought process that we went through that, that got into the CIP in the first place. Um, Mark, um, you indicated early in your, your comments that the, the CIP document that was submitted to council and provided to council last week is, is really a draft. Yes. And um, you and I talked about something, and, and I, I know you've been contacted by other council members related to it, uh, related to something that was in the CIP budget for the transit uh, department. And pursuant to our conversations, uh, I know that some constituents contacted me about a question related to that. Could you, you know, I mean, the fact that this was just a draft document, it's not set in stone yet, uh, could you just kind of follow up and let the public know what, what the issue was and what happened and go from there? Sure, this is the, uh, the cameras. Um, <coughs> you have to go back to, yeah, this is a draft document. This originally was uh, begun back in the spring when departments were putting this together. And in the case of the cameras for the transit center, we were still addressing an issue with um, fiber optics to, to serve the transit center. <clears throat> and that it, the, this amount was actually in the 2014 operating budget. There was uncertainty over whether or not we were going to be able to pull it off this year. Fortunately, since the time that it was submitted as a, again, basically we were rebudgeting it for 2015. Uh, it was moved into the capital improvement plan rather than the operating budget. That was a decision made by Mr. Collins. No, no big deal there, but it was duplicated. And uh, Councillor Pansky uh, asked about it, and we explained how the um, the fiber optics back in May were uncertain. Now they're more certain. Looks like we're going to get the fiber optics in this year, so we're going to do that. That's one of those things that you'll see pulled from the plan. And as we talk about tomorrow night, we're actually a little short of 11.4. This will make us a little shorter of 11.4. Gives you an idea that it is it is a moving. It's a fluid document. And it's going to continue to be a fluid document until council ultimately approves. So it was actually <clears throat> monies that were fund approved last year. We didn't in, in the 2014 budget. We didn't expend them in 2014, so we're carrying it over to 2015. But now it looks as though we're going to be able to pull it off this year. And I think Mr. Collins, if if we as long as the fiber optics are in place, that was what re really was holding us back. So it's still on the bubble. It could end up in 2015. It could, could be in 2014. Right now, I would my belief is that we're going to get it done in 2014. So we'll yank it from 2015. And in our conversations, you indicated something about grant funding, possibly? Well, these are all funded by a transit aid. And one of the reasons we moved it in, I think the conscious effort to move it into CIP is there are, is a slight chance that we could get what's called uh, capital funding versus operational funding for something like this. Capital funding is funded at 80 percent, or it has been. But the, the feds have been yanking that down. Um, do I, my guess is that we probably will not get the 80%, so that's kind of why we're leaning towards if we can get it done this year and we're not going to get 80%, we'll, we'll just do it this year. Federal operating funds are down to 55%. A few years ago they were at 62%, then 60 now then 57 now 55 could even get as low as 54 So. We'd prefer to get 80% funded, but if we can't, then we'll go with the 55. Okay. Thank you. Anything else, sir? Okay, report on the employee clinic. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we've been having meetings with uh, across departments in individual departments and divisions for the last month or so. Reported to council that we were going to be doing that. And for the most part, I'd say the response has been positive. Uh, change is always um, 
something that uh, employees and, and just anybody in an organization get a little concerned about. But we've really made these types of changes before when we've switched over from a preferred provider with one provider, like when we went to Affinity to Aurora, that was a change in providers. So that is a natural uh, concern that employees have. Um, but the, the main concerns that the employees seem to have were um, fearful that the clinic might be mandatory in the future. Well, when we have a preferred provider plan, if you go, if you go to the preferred provider, you get a discount versus if you don't go to the preferred provider. So it really isn't anything different. It's just another um, overlay to the, the, health and the health plan that we have. Some uh, were concerned about high penalties for not using the system, and we've talked with Intera, which is the group that the three of us, the city, the county, and the school district have uh, identified as being the, uh, the provider if we were to do this. And they've indicated that there's generally a gap. If you have about a $25, 20 to $30 difference between the cost to go to the clinic and the cost of not going to the clinic, people will get directed. They, they will naturally go to the clinic and at least give it a try. Um, and with Intera's experience, once people give it a try, they realize that there is, it is a good, uh, it's a, it's a well-run clinic, very professional, and you get a lot more attention, which is one of the things that our employee group, we sent a full employee group uh, uh, to go over to Sheboygan and take a look at their operation, and they were very pleased with what they saw, and they reported that back to our employees as well. So we're hoping to get um, steerage with that differential. That's what Intera believes you will get. Intera doesn't make any money unless they get people going to the clinic. And so that's what, uh, that's their uh, motivation to get this done. With everything I've heard from the employees uh, and seeing what they've said, the majority are willing to give it a try. And we believe that with 20, er, we've estimated that with, if 28% of the services that this clinic could offer are done in the clinic versus elsewhere, other other options, will save $128,000 a year. Um, and that's a significant amount of money when you think about how much uh, is in our health insurance plan of over $10 million. That's still a pretty significant amount of money. Um, that could help slow the increase in health insurance as, has been continuing to go up and up. So I believe we're ready to move forward with this. My plan would be to bring this to council for their consideration on the last meeting in October, not the next meeting, what I would propose to do is to provide you with updated, frequently asked questions that the employees asked throughout this process so you can see what the questions were and what the, que and what the answers to those questions are. And certainly if there's any questions that come to pass that you want answered, we want to make sure you have an opportunity to get those questions answered as well. A representative of Intera has indicated they'd be willing to come and make a brief presentation, not a workshop, just 10 minute presentation at uh, the next council meeting. If that's something council would like, we'll schedule that with Intera so that you can meet them face to face, talk to them about what their approach is to providing uh, an employee uh, only clinic. Um, the school district and the county uh, are willing to wait for us to get on board if this is the schedule we follow. If we do this, we would be looking sometime in January because we need to give Intera a 90-day notice to proceed so they can get employees hired, rent the proposed location of the clinic, which right now appears to be over on Emmers Lane near that Walgreens at Emmers <coughs> and Highway 21. That looks to be a central location for um, school district, county, and city employees. Uh, so that's the area they're looking at. Uh, but Intera can provide you with, with greater detail if you'd like them to make a brief presentation at the next meeting. Seem reasonable? Yeah. I would, I would ask that, yeah. Yes. Yep. I think we're starting to do it. I know I'm, I'm kind of putting you on the spot a little bit. If there's any questions in particular you would like answered, please forward them to me. Uh, we'll, we'll, I think the employees asked a lot of questions. So our goal is to get to those FAQs very soon so you can kind of see what the employees said. We're asking the employee focus group to refine those questions and get the answers so that they feel comfortable with them as well. So we want that group to take a look at it first before we forward it to council. The sooner we could get those out, the better. We do have three weeks this time. So. Yeah, uh, so my goal, we have it end of next time. week is when I'm planning to get the, the final version of the questions to you so we get the employees a little bit of time to put it together themselves. Any other questions, comments? 
Update on riverfront visioning process. Mr. Cummings. Thank you, Mayor Tower. Uh, be very brief, uh, Darren. Uh, I've had a lot of people ask me who participated in the visioning process later this letter in August. Uh, what are the next steps, <laughs> timelines? Right now, we're at, um, East, East Central, the, the primary personnel from East Central that was working on it, the planner, they left and took another job, so it kind of set them back with getting the report to us. Uh, in our discussions with East Central, they said that they're hoping to get us the report sometime in October so we can have some type of presentation in November. Okay. Thank you. Questions, comments? Okay, this comes back to citizen statements to oh, the council. Mayor, can we go back to, <coughs> oh, yeah, Mr. Chairman, go to ahead. number B? We never got uh, the sex offender in the budget <coughs> workshop. Thank you, Mr. Result. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Oh, Herman. Good, good point. I, yeah, I apologize for skipping over that as well. Um, even between the time we wrote the agenda and tonight, a few things have changed. Um, originally, I had reported to council that there was a conflict on October 7th because we were scheduled to have the League of Women Voters was going to have the congressional debate right here in the council chambers, which would have conflicted with, with this, uh, with this workshop. As it turns out, um, the League of Women Voters is not going to be sponsoring that debate. Um, a group at UW Oshkosh is going to be doing it. That group does not, the, uni the university doesn't have the capabilities for a live telecast of, of, the, of that debate now because they're at the university and not here. So we can actually go back to October 7th if you so choose. If you want to go to the congressional debate, you're going to have a conflict. But we will have the room and we will have the um, broadcasting capabilities. Is that correct? So Andy tells me over there that mm -hmm. he shook his head yes. Do so it. we can go the 7th if you'd like to for that one. Do it. Yep. We good on the 7th? Mm -hmm. I can't answer at this time. Okay. I, 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 I wish we could have put it in there, but we just, it, <clears throat> when we printed this, we still didn't know that, but now. Now that we know what we know, so we're, we're looking at October 7th. If you could let me know, that would be great. If not, we'll just schedule it for another time. We can bring it back at the next meeting. But right. it looks like October 7th. Oh, wait a minute. This is the last meeting, the last meeting this for October 7th. This is the last meeting for October 7th. Yeah. That's the reason I wanted to. What time would it, we start? Uh, we can, st it's a staff only. I think we had said 6 o'clock. We had 6 o'clock. Because there's a planned commission beginning at four. Correct. Day. So, yes, yeah, you're right. <coughs> this again. I don't know if that changes it, or is it an issue that you might be out of town? And, and I don't recall either. I've, I've had a couple things yeah. go on to my schedule. I, I know I have three open nights in, in October at this point. Uh, so. Well, let me ask this way, Mr. Mayor, because if there's some folks that still need to check their calendars, you want, you, you want full attendance, or what's your limit? Of how many absences? I think we probably need full attendance on this. But I'll see what others say. I mean, no, more than one gone, but we didn't, yeah. we're not going to go with three or four. Like I, we got I can, I can let you know tomorrow if, if, if I'm. So available. effectively, you want to give so each council member the ability to, to veto the meeting. <laughs> if, if I hear anything, if it I'll let you know. Too far out, we're going to have to come back and probably if, sacrifice more if, than we have to. We'll 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 go back if, outside if, the budget. We're going to be ready for the seventh. So we can go the seventh if somebody lets me know they can't make it. I'll just put it on the next agenda to schedule it for a future time. I mean, I'm kind of in the same boat as uh, Councillor Fitzgerald. I mean, I barely have any open nights the month of October, and we I had it for October, moved it to November, so now i got to go back and check October again. So, But if we have a conflict, why don't we put it right back on the 5th of November? I mean, we could go back to... Well, November 5th, that was what we were looking at for <clears> the budget, <throat> workshop. budget workshop. The conflict for November 5th, is the Long Range Finance Committee typically meets in 404. So a couple things. Well, two council members are on that committee. Um, we could ask Long Range Finance to hold that off. Uh, you're going to hear some discussions about topics for Long Range Finance when we talk tomorrow night. Um, if they'd be willing to postpone their meeting or move it to a different date, we could still do the 5th. So we weren't thinking of the, the sexual offenders workshop for the 5th. We were actually thinking for the the third budget workshop for the CIP. And we are under the gun there. If we can't do it on the 5th, we've got to pick a date pretty soon. And I would suggest the, well, even the 4th is going to be tough because that's election night. And that's why we moved it the last, that's why we moved it to the 5th the last time. October, not not this late in the game. It, it, 
you know, my apologies. Had it that been in here, I could have checked before I came. Right. But I, as as the chair of the Long Range Finance Committee, I will I will move our meeting around for November accordingly. So we can do the CIP on the fifth. <laughs> I see Ms. Larson <laughs> nodding her head. And smiling. In appreciation, probably, yes. Okay, so CIP, <clears throat> still on the 5th, sex offender workshop. Suggestions on that? I, I, think, can we, I, I think I can let Mr. Roloff know my schedule by tomorrow. I, I just know that I only have three let, nights open. And I'll put it in the newsletter what the time. consensus is, but we want to make sure we have all seven council members we're, here. We're trying to have all seven. Mm -hmm. No less than six. It would be nice to have all seven, but if we can't get seven people together for the next two months, then we're going to be in a, a pickle because November is going to be budget stuff again. Um, That's why I think we were kind of hoping to knock that out before right. we went into budget season. So to be honest, that comes first, so we may have to wait on the sex offender workshop because we've got the budget issues first. Okay. okay. okay let's, let's try for the seventh, and if you two can get back, that's it, by, by the end of the week, so maybe by the end of the week that we... We'll know for sure by the end of the week, then. End of, end of the week, so the sooner you can do that and let him know whether or not this yep, that'll I work, will, then... I will do my best. Then, yep, okay, thanks. Mayor, Mayor, before you go on to the next yeah. council or citizen statements, could we just get a, either in our in a, your newsletter, Mr. Roloff, or if you wanted to put it on as a um, agenda item, uh, we had talked about, and I know Darren's working on it a little bit, but that central city visioning, not not the riverfront, but we had also talked about, you know, reevaluating the central city. You know, parking was an issue, and future uh, businesses for the central city. What do we want that central city to continue to look like? Because the visioning of that central city is really done, and we had talked about, and you had said, you know, we had talked about going in. To a visioning of the central city in the long range. So, if we could just have a little update if staff's worked on it, not worked on it, if um, you've been talking with uh, East Central to, to come in on that, um, or who you just, there was some discussion bringing back the original partners. I think the foundation was part of that, the chamber is part of that, um, the business improvement district is part of all that. So, um, just an update. I'll put it on next agenda for, for an update. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you. That was. Anything else for the city manager? <clears throat> okay, then, then we'll come back to citizen statements to council. Again, an opportunity to talk about something positive going on in the city or a concern you may have. If you'd like to come up, the microphone's open. Let me comments to five minutes. Give us your name and address. Speak directly to the council. No electioneering, and don't talk about anything else already been talked about on the agenda. I see no one coming forward. City manager announcements and statements. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, memo, it's in the agenda uh, on the relocation of the yard waste drop-off site. That's effective next Monday, September 29th. It's just around the corner from Idaho Street where you currently drop it off. It'll be on West 3rd. It's moving it as part of the um, Public Works Field Operations Facility. Um, that'll, so we're moving it and letting people know. So uh, if anybody is dropping off yard waste, uh, just keep going around a third. Don't worry, we're, it's not closed or anything like that. Same hours we're going to maintain as we usually do for the fall. Um, and then the last item I have in there, I know there have been questions recently about change orders, and uh, this technically isn't required for me to report, but I thought it was important to point out that we do get negative change orders every once in a while. It's one of those things where we, we only send you the bad news. We don't necessarily tell you the good news. But this is just one example of a change order that we, we did recently with, with advanced construction for, um, for our paving project from last year. Uh, usually uh, it's less scope of work that's needed, but there are these types of, that, types of projects that we do spend less. Um, and even though we're not required, we wanted to show you that these do happen periodically, and, and Ms. Pansky's smiling. So I know she's been asking, uh, it, it, being new on the council and everything, but these are the types of things that you'll see. Usually it has to do with quantities that are adjusted after the fact. Okay. That's all I have. Anything else? Look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. A second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We're adjourned. Good morning. Good morning.